Hey everybody, today we're going to be analyzing Regenti's decks and gameplay. If you want to have your deck or gameplay analyzed by me, please submit a recording of it to the email found in the description below. And I will do some, I'll make an analysis video for you. All you have to do is put a Dropbox link, email it to me, and I'll take care of it. Simple as pie. So Regenti has two decks that we're going to analyze. The first is called Move, um, with 27 O's I counted. He has 23 wins and 12 losses. He has an almost 100% win rate against all the factions other than Monster, which he, where most of his losses come from. Monster represents 33% of his games, which is a big deal since uh, that's one-fifth of the factions having a disproportionate number of games. He's going to have to find a way to improve his win rate against monsters. Moving on, we're going to now analyze the deck list. It becomes immediately obvious to me why this deck is struggling against monster, but we're going to get to that a little later. First, we need to analyze what's in the deck. We have our core cards, Elven Mercenary, First Light, and Saskia. We have our movement set cards, Blue Mountain Commando, Dwarven Mercenary, Marksman, Sheldon Skaggs, and Zoltan Shive. We have a supplement for the Dwarfs from in the Dwarven Mercenary and the Sheldon Skaggs through Barkley Elves. We have the Ambush set with Thruvial, Morin, and Isengrim. We have the Hand Buffing set with Hawker Support and Bran. And we have Mithabrock, which is just probably a tech card. Villain Tretmarath has some synergy with the hand buffing cards because you have most of your points in your hand and since the Hawker supports don't have the weakness of Dragoons of having a random target, uh, they at least, you don't have accidentally have a card that's too big that you are forced to put on the board and get hit by Villain Tretmarath. You can at least control where the points are going and avoid uh, anti-synergy between the Villain Tretmarath and a Dragoon you would with a Dragoon. Moving on, we're now going to talk about what we can improve. The first things first is we can talk about Bruverhoog. Do you need Bruverhoog in this deck? And my opinion is no. Bruverhoog is useful when you have bad access to your good cards, your silvers and stuff. Because Bruverhoog really depend you know like if you really need a specific silver card Bruvahoog's there for you otherwise you should be using Enya or Francisca usually Enya and uh, the win rate with Enya kind of proves why she's more generally good Bruvahoog ha has the weakness that he lowers the quality of your draws because he pulls a high quality card from your deck and he has to kind of be played early as opposed to late because if you draw all your silvers then Bruverhoog is useless. Does this deck need you to draw any silvers? Well you have Isengrim, that's one access to silvers. You have Barkley Elves who can get you a silver. Then there is Bran. You wouldn't want to play Bran from your deck usually because then you can't hand buff her. You would rather draw her making which is another anti-synergy between Bruvahoog and Bran. This deck has plenty of deck thinning through the Elven Mercenary, so you're probably going to get all your cards anyway. So what's the point of playing Bruvahoog on all your cards, uh, on your silver cards, if you're going to draw them? I would recommend moving from a Bruvahoog to an Enya, because Enya can be played on any round and is a little bit more flexible than Bruvahoog because there are a lot of different spells that you might want to play against different factions as opposed to other factions. You get, you get that flexibility of playing the spell you need to play twice, twice. Another card I would recommend is Hawker Smuggler. It's really good against Monster uh, since it can get a really high amount of points. You might even put one or two in the deck. You might switch out uh, a Dwarven Mercenary for that. It's just a tech card. It, you know, I know it doesn't synergize with anything in your deck, but it is a card that counters swarm decks. And both monster decks that are being played are going to put a bunch of units onto the board. So I do recommend putting one or two in your deck just to handle that. It's not a big deal. 
uh, you're already having a lot of high win rate against the other factions, just that Hawker Smugglers is especially good against Monster. The next thing we need to really focus on is your Tool Belt. The Tool Belt is these cards down here. They are your tech cards mostly, and you should be adjusting them regardless of which faction you're playing, regardless what deck you're playing, to whatever you're facing. And you're play facing a lot of monsters, and there are a few bronze spells that are really good against monsters. One is Lacerate, the other one is Shrooms. It doesn't matter if your opponent is playing uh, Dagon with Dagon Swarm deck, Lacerate's going to be good against that. Or if they're playing Consume, Lacerate's going to be good against that. Now, you don't want to have too many spells, and that's why Enya's really good here, because then you don't have to dilute your uh, Elven Mercenaries. Because I can tell that the reason why you're only running one spell is because if you have two spells, you have a risk that the Elven Mercenary picks two of the spells that aren't First Light when you just want to get First Light. I get that. But that risk is worth ha uh, not worth not having diverse spells. The Azure's Thunder is good if there's lots of Savage Bears and lots of uh, Hawker Smugglers and Octvist in the meta, but I'm not really seeing lots of those cards. I'm seeing a lot of really wide board swarming strategies. So I would suggest switching out the, at least the Azure's Thunder for a Lacerate. That would tremendously improve the quality of this deck, just having a Lacerate on call for those monster decks. It might not be enough, but it would be help you a lot more. Huh. So what, are, what is this deck doing well? Uh, well, it has a lot of tempo, ridiculous amount of tempo. This is, there is a reason why it beats everybody else other than Monster, and Monster is really strong right now. And I think that's because it can keep up with the best decks in terms of tempo, as well as punishing greedy decks like Reveal. Uh, which is probably why this deck does so well against Nilfgaard. It has enough carryover into the final round through the hand buffing system to win those kinds of games, and I think the Mint of Rock is fine if you're not running Lacerate. So, now we're going to go look at some gameplay. Our first game is up against Skellige. I know a bunch of my viewers are having trouble against Skellige right now with my movement deck. Uh, Regenti shows a really good way of playing against them. So first things first, uh, he's going to play the Blue Mountain Commando. The Blue Mountain Commando, you have to kind of play that early because Elven Mercenaries' first lights will get in the way. Though one thing you could do is you could mulligan out the Blue Mountain Commando if you already are expecting to use a bunch of first lights. But my uh, Regenti only has one Elven Mercenary in their hand. He decides to buff up the Elven Mercenary, probably because um, Regenti is expecting to play the Elven Mercenary anyways. If we look at this board, we can see that he has separated them into two lanes. This is not really necessary uh, until you see the Marksman come out. Like This kind of protects you from Igni, but I don't expect an Igni from a Skellige player right now. I expect Corals. So this is a little safer from Coral, but your Coral wouldn't be all that good at that point now. You can see that uh, Reginti got a little restless there. <laughs> really wanted to play that Sheldon Skaggs. Got a, good, a really strong Sheldon Skaggs out there. It was about 20 points. No, it was 23 points Sheldon Skagg there. Right? Now, the uh, Blue Mountain Commando is actually quite safe because we have the Marksman. Even if they kill off, uh, used an Igni there, which they wouldn't, <laughs> uh, the Blue Mountain Commando would have been j t taking the hit for us. Now that the, almost all my opponent, actually all the opponent's golds are now on the field, you do, need, do not need to play around Geralt Igni anymore. He pulls the Marksman and two Blue Mountain Commandos for the maximum amount of points with Zoltan. We get to see the bear from Gremist, which is fine. And we play a... 
Huh, 21 point Isengrim, which is really powerful. I would have tempted, been tempted to play the Isengrim earlier. But that was fine as well. We put instant pass for card advantage. Our opponent's playing the Captains, which just kind of makes like, well, would have hoped I had shrooms in this point at this point, but we'll live. Regenti correctly doesn't mulligan anything here because doing so runs the risk of pulling Saskia and pulling Saskia might cost Regenti the game. I would have played the Elven Mercenary. Why? Because the Donner on Hindar might come out. Donner on Hindar could remove the Hawker support that I might need for Bran. We play the Morin in the last round because it might snipe Priestess of Freya if our opponent doesn't play around it. Unfortunately, they do. And <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. It's still like a lot of points. It's still 11 points silver, which is fine. And we win with the 16 point Bran. I would say this was an excellent show of how to play this deck. And there's not really much uh, Regenti could have done better in that situation. Like, the only thing I would have changed in that entire game would have been to play around the Donneron Hindar by playing the first light first. That's all for part one. Stay tuned for part two, which will be coming out soon. If you want to have your games analyzed by me, Submit a recording to the email in the description. If you can't fit in the email, send me a Dropbox link and I'll take care of the rest. Make sure to keep it at as high quality as you can get it, and I will do my best to help you become a better player. This is Eric Stockhausen, and I hope you have a good day.